Well, it is finally Friday, Smite fans, and that means SPL Phase 2, Season 7, Day 1, something like that is kicking off. It is Dolson and Gormizer for the first set of Phase Number 2. Gore, and it's on the back end of maybe the closest phase of SPL we've ever had. Cannot wait to get this one started. Yeah, I'm incredibly excited. First off, having a regular schedule every week finally is going to help my life immensely. But also, just getting back into it, I mean, like you said, at the end of Phase 1, everything just felt so close-knit. I mean, even Obey, who, you know, had a lot of rough losses at the very beginning of the phase, right. were starting to take it to some of these top teams. Now that they're going to be able to kind of start off at that regular strength, I think it's going to make for a much more interesting Phase 2. Now, here's your schedule for this week. Just... Touch, uh, briefly touched on it in the SPL waiting room, but we got Ghost Obey starting off the week, Radiance United to round out our day here today. As always, at home, if you guys are watching, make sure to tweet at us, at SmitePro, hashtag SPL, and hey, you might see your tweet here on the broadcast. Gore, let's not waste any more time. Let's sink our yeah. teeth into this first matchup that we got in here, day one, phase two, season seven. Talk about Ghost maybe with me a little bit first. <laughs> they are the, the mid-season champions. They're the hot hand here in this league and you got to assume their confidence is high going up against obey who's admittedly had a rough start to their season seven yeah i think there's something to be said about ghost start to season seven as well while it wasn't you know catastrophic and it wasn't you know countless right. losses like obey had they definitely didn't start off phase one on the right foot and that was with some of the new changes coming through now there's even more changes that are coming through since we're playing after mid-season so there's a question of whether or not they're going to stumble at the beginning like they did in the beginning of phase one but i mean honestly you've got panda cat you've got pbm you've got fine okay sam as well as captain twig at least three of these guys i I can say have very like just huge meta changing brains when it comes down to it right. i think between pbm and fine okay they are more than willing to shake things up just to see and try out some of these new things and i think the way that things have shifted specifically i mean sam was one of the carries in phase one now yes. we've made some of the junglers a little bit stronger you know aggro mentioned golden blade i'm thinking serrated edge i'm curious to see what sam can do today I absolutely agree. I'm so glad you bring that up because uh, you, you'll see it a little bit later on this week, but, but I was able to sit down with some of the Obey guys, really talk to Sino as well about where he thinks this meta kind of stands. And jungle was what came to the forefront of that conversation. Even, uh, you know, Wolfie in the mid lane kind of rolls his eyes. He's like, you know, I guess it's the junglers who are going to be carrying a lot of these games. And <laughs> I don't disagree. So I love that you bring up Sam and how pivotal he's going to be to this ghost team. He helped carry games in phase one, but now maybe in a better position than ever to get this ghost team off to a hot start. Now their opponents in Obey, remember they're going to have a different look at the long lane here today as uh, Wowie yeah. still uh, one game out from coming back post suspension. So a, a tough start for Obey Gore going up against the midseason champions in Ghost, but also not at full strength. Yeah, that was actually something I had kind of forgot about. I feel so long ago that, that all those competitive <laughs> rulings came out, but because because a lot of these teams had their players sit out their two sets throughout, you know, midseason and things like that. Now we're in this position where Wowie is the only one left who still has this one set suspension going into this. But they're grabbing Stuart, like you had mentioned, and it kind of feels net neutral overall. I mean, it's actually going to be interesting to see how it comes in today. Stuart has made some very interesting plays that we have seen throughout the league. Wowie, though... I mean, you have to talk about the fact that he's experienced with Obey, so you have that trust and yep. that feeling that comes in there. That's probably going to be the biggest difference between them. And, you know, they kind of memed him in the pre-show about how hunters aren't necessarily the ones carrying the games. It does kind of feel like the junglers, your supports, your mids, even your solo laners to an extent, that are going to make that bigger impact. But honestly, we're also coming into the, you know, the Ring of Hakate world, where Typhon Fang is going <laughs> to make right. these guys unkillable. If you're playing, you know, if you're Stuart here, you might be able to bring in a Kronos, an Olorun, a Sol, a Freya, somebody over to that duo lane and just absolutely decimate. And if you can do something like that, that's not only a good stamp for you here in the Pro League, but it's a good way to get Obey started as well. Yeah, I mean, you, you talk about a jungle matchup here. Sam for soccer against Sino. Uh, cannot wait yeah, to get right? this one going, especially with uh, a lot of the conversations we've had. The uh, the SPL waiting room guys talked about it a little bit in the new meta section of that show as well. But I like that you, you put a little focus on the mid lane here, and maybe specifically 
looking at Wolfie and, and really made a name for himself on the Rigen and the Merlin there in phase number one. Mm-hmm. Spear of uh, Spear of the Magus changes, obviously, <laughs> maybe impacting uh, the middle lane a little bit there. Uh, what are expectations uh, in your mind for Wolfie here today? So this is a very interesting one because stat-wise, Wolfie was one of the most decorated for Obey, Obey through Phase 1. But yep. a lot of that really was the fact that he was there the whole time, right? Sino became quick to top first bloods on the team, highest kills, or at least competing for highest kills on the team. And he was there much less time than Wolfie. So I think Wolfie, you know, we had kind of joked about it a few times during Phase 1, how they mentioned they wanted to play through the mid lane. I think now's the chance to show that. If Sino and yep. Wolfie work together, then this could be the Obey base squad that we didn't know we could see coming into phase two well the the casters in the community outside of mifflin uh they have ghost gaming here in this one <laughs> obey certainly an uphill battle in uh, their first game of phase number two lots to talk about gore i think in picks and bands a lot of oh, what God, you've yeah. listed here is going to come to the forefront cthulhu now available uh the the mage adc's ever so important uh, what do you think is going to be priority here? I mean, <laughs> Persephone was was highly banned out pretty consistently. Do you think Cthulhu yeah. belongs in that category? Where does your mind go? So I'm actually surprised the first thing that we see, I, maybe less surprised because it is against Ghost Gaming, but the, the first thing that comes out is Hercules. It feels like right now Warriors, especially in the support role, but the Guardians as well, they just don't feel as good. You get kind of beat up. I mean, I'm a support main through and through. I don't like my early game anymore. I can't make the well the dumb mistakes I typically make in terms of gameplay. Now, we're not going to see that here, but I think we're going to see the escalation of these magical ADCs specifically. You see Freya there. I wouldn't be surprised if Oleron, Chrono, someone joins them down there because I think, the again, the Ring of Hakate as well as the Typhon's Fang combo, it just can make you nigh unkillable at the beginning and you know when you have that kind of combo going for you it's just rough the problem is is if you're focused on them it would let something maybe like that cthulhu ghost bands away through or you're looking at you know like arachne right now who all of a sudden just because of serrated edge as well as this <laughs> golden blade start it is actually somewhat viable bakasura kali you know your dodgies pele even ratatosker with his new acorns can be a huge jungle shakeup, and I- i'm interested to see now what they're going to pick up since there's so much available. Yeah, a lot of meta questions answered early on here. Cthulhu taken away, Freya there as well, Persephone off the board. First overall pick, it's an Uller here for Obey. Obviously, maybe a little flexibility, could see some different looks at the long lane, uh, but you don't seem too surprised there, Gore, by the Uller locked in. So... It did just throw me off until I remembered, oh right, they have a substitute hunter coming in, right? You want this guy as comfortable as possible. Stuart, you do not want him to be on any shaky ground. And if he's going to play Uller, he's going to look good. We had talked about a couple of the items uh, a little bit earlier. But the Atalanta's bow, fail not. If you want to go that route, you can also just focus much more on power. Uller's incredibly flexible. And there was a reason he was top pick at the end of last phase in terms of the way things were going. One of the top picked hunters. I think it's going to carry on true here a lot of good CC and a lot of good damage for him. He just fits the mold of any team. Well, Yamoja Olaran both locked in here for Ghost in a long lane that I'm scared of, Gore, in the current meta. You talk about Ring of Agate coming into uh, the pick and ban phase here. Freya found herself in the ban column, as we've mentioned. But Olaran absolutely one of the premier gods to take advantage yeah. of the, the, the reworked ring, I suppose, out of that category. You pair that with the Emoja, maybe shore up some of that, uh, that early game for Olaron, and, and Ghost Gaming have to be happy with their first two. Yes, and I think this is actually going to be interesting because originally I was going to say Uller, you know, I, we've been talking about Mage ADCs. That does mean typically you'd want something more physical on your team to take up that place, and that's where, you know, Medusa, sometimes your niece come in, like these ability-based hunters, but because they pick up that Aphrodite, it feels like Obey are still going pretty standard in terms of their composition. They grab that Nike that we saw Sino work so well with in Phase 1, and it feels like Obey are doing the more or less exact same thing they would have wanted to do at the end of Phase 1. They're playing the same game, and since Aphrodite is able to make it through, because there's so many other priority bans to be had here, that healing is going to be monstrous to deal with. Looks like I might be standing corrected here. It looks like Ho Yi will be paired with the Emoja in the long lane for uh, for Ghost, and then Captain Twig out of the middle lane will be piloting that Ola run. 
I suppose you could plug and play either of those. So we'll have to wait and see in game yep. where Ghost Gaming elect to put those two hunters. It's a Fafnir Shing Chin band out for Ghost Gaming. High presence on the support for Obey, taking a lot of those top tier gods off the table. But I think, you know, as much as we've talked about Ghost and talked about what they've gotten so far through their first three and how they're very strong picks, I think Obey absolutely there as well. Comfort on Stuart, very oh, yeah. important. But then an Aphrodite Nike, those two have been towards the top of the annoying tier list, and maybe that's a, a good thing as far as difficulty to play against. So I'm actually a, a little curious about it because there's a lot of focus, like you said, Xing Chen, the Fafnir, the Terra. Cthulhu makes sense because solo lane is, is typically where he's going to mm -hmm. go. But we saw Geb and Kepri, especially paired with an Aphrodite, being maybe one of the top supports, period, throughout Phase 1. And I kind of expected Obey to go that route. I mean, you get Aphrodite with Undying Love, all of a sudden, hey, cool, here's a second life for you to stay alive here. Then you get Kepri literally giving you a second life, and it could change the pace of things. But they go the Ymir, who I'm a huge fan of, and I actually love what they're doing here. Those wall placements, if you get them just right, not only do they feel good as a support to set it up that way, but for someone like Nemesis, no jump, all run, no leap, they're not going to be able to escape here. So Ghost... You're gonna have to be cautious in the jungle. Gore, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Ghost Gaming's draft here. I mean, this is this is maybe our new reality given some of the the item and god changes here going in to the mid season. Hades and Nemesis to round out the draft for Ghost Gore. Uh, are those yeah. a pair of gods that give you some good feeling about uh, Ghosts Five? If you had told me Nemesis and Hades were going to get picked up at all this weekend, I would have been maybe laughing at you. Just in terms of everybody that's available, they weren't necessarily high on my list of gods I expected to see, Agreed. but I'm excited to see them. I think Nemesis, especially against a Nike, an Aphrodite who's going to put some you know protections on herself, Ymir who's going to be pretty tanky, she is going to help shred through those three gods pretty easily. So a lot of target-oriented calling for Ghost I expect to see. And Hades... And this one just coming out of left field. I, you just have to see it. It is phase two, week one, day one. Obey versus Ghost, and it's Finch and Mifflin on the call. Damn, is it good to be back, Dave. Let's hop into the SPL. Finch and Mifflin here as Obey and Ghost will be our very first match. And I think that we should start. We already knew the main ADCs were going to happen. No big surprise there. Sustain's still really good. I really want to start here, Mifflin, with Sam for Soccer picking this nemesis because there are so many junglers we thought would be strong. The basic attack assassins, the Bakas, the Kalis of the world. But I feel like nemesis into Nike, into a mirror, that all feels pretty good to me. Do you like that pick here? I, I like Nemesis into this exact draft, and I think w when we talk about Nemesis openly outside of the SPO, I like to bring up the fact that she has no real way to engage herself. She's completely reliant on the rest of her team to find those opportunities to get in herself, but she's going to have that. Fine OK is going to be able to dive the backline incredibly well. That's a two-second fear. Two entire seconds that no one's going to be able to deal with Nemesis auto-attacking them. Captain Twig is going to be drawing a lot of the attention in all of these engagements because an older run that's allowed to free cast is an older run that is an absolute issue. So I think that Nemesis is definitely going to work into this draft, but it's going to be difficult. Inbound on this Ymir has a pretty decent matchup into Nem in the early game. You can freeze out, get rid of the shield instantly, but it's a double-edged sword. If Nem gets the first advanced strike onto inbound, there's no way this Ymir is going to be able to make a comeback. Sanctified Field almost makes it impossible for Ymir to operate. Panicat on this Hu Yi has a really good matchup himself. There's a lot that Obey is going to have to work through with the draft that they have. I think they're putting a lot of onus on this Aphrodite to make it through the late game. It does seem like a lot of it is going to be relying on this Aphrodite to carry them late, and then a lot on Sino's shoulders, I'm thinking, to get them there with this Nike in the jungle. Sam already getting aggressive onto Wolfie. Brings him low, but not a lot of kill potential there. One thing I want to point out for us here, Myth, is look at this relic start here for Polar Bear Mike. He's gone with the Sunder. And I feel like with some of the changes to it, we've seen it picked up a lot in response to Nike. But I don't think it's just Nike. I think this could be strong against Amir, too. What do you think about this first relic? I think it's the smartest pickup you want. For those who aren't initiated, the new Sundering Spear, yeah, it removes shields. That secondary health bar that Sino might be relying on, he could just not have it anymore. Sure, it's a skill shot, but putting it on the Emoja means that a long-range stun sets you up, find that Sundering Spear afterward. You have to wait until Sino uses that ultimate, but it's going to be a huge determining factor. I'm not sure that we're going to see Sino even try and use it until he knows that PBM Sunder is down. 
That's true. I mean, it does still get a lot of value just as damage if you're going for a much more damage-oriented Nike type build. And a lot of the cases, you're not even that much reliant on the health shield because it does scale so much off your own health. Obviously still valuable, but I think in the jungle, the Sunder may be a little bit less of an issue, but you're certainly right there, Miff. It's a great pickup into Nike almost in every occasion. We we'll should be able to see my, Polar Bear Mike get some good value out of it. Another place to take a look has got to be the solo lane. There were a lot of changes here with Gladiator Shield not being nearly as strong now, and what are Warriors going to do over there? It looks like the answer is, who needs them, right? Bring in Hades and, and Aphrodite, and I guess that's who's battling in solo lane now. Yeah, just pick gods that have sustain in their kits. Right now, if you're looking at a warrior, the best sustain item in my mind likely gonna be that soul eater. Now that the passive works before you have it fully stacked, we've seen Sun Wukong get a little bit of a resurgence over there. But failing that, why not pick a god that has a heal on your three? Both teams decided to do that. Aphrodite's got the birds, Hades has got devour souls. There's plenty of ways that they're going to be able to sit in this lane for a long time, but just off the builds right now, Final K is going to get slightly outscaled. It seems like Ducky's going to be moving into that Book of Thoth, which means that he can sit in the lane, farm up his stacks, play passively, and just continually get stronger. No ultimate for Ducky. This should be first blood as the Pillar of Agony keeps him locked down. Fine, okay. Find your very first kill of Phase 2 SPL and puts Ghost on the board. That's that's a rough one, man. You just get a little bit outscaled. You don't get the map pressure that you need. Ducky's stuck at level 4. That's a free gank. Final K likely didn't even really need help there from Sam for Soccer. And the silence to come through to make sure that the Kiss couldn't stun out the Nemesis was perfect. Uh, a well-executed gank, and it can continue to happen now. If Final K continues to run with this lead and Ducky going a no-movement speed build this early on, means that Nemesis can walk on over and just continue slowing him out, get the follow-up from Final K. This Aphrodite might be struggling. It could certainly become a problem there for Ducky. And remember, Ducky and Sino, I think, largely considered the pillars of this Obey roster. In my mind, a lot of sort of my expectations for them around Phase 2 was considering those two their star players. And if they already have the Sunder to deal with Sino, and now Ducky's falling behind early, that is a bit scary for Obey. But things are not out of reach just yet. Look at some of these new items that have come in for Ghost. We already see the Golden Blade there for Sam for Nemesis. No big surprise there. But Fine OK, which Doug pointed out for us, our excellent spectator, is worth Working on a ring build, do you think that's Akate coming in for this Hades? Man, I, I really hope not, because if Hades is picking up Ring of Akate, <laughs> that's indicative of just how strong that item is. <laughs> Hades is not an auto-attacker. I don't think I've ever seen someone pick up a ring on Hades and thought to myself, oh, that was pretty smart, but now in Season 7, when you just have that phenomenal stat stick, it's going to work out really well, and it'll allow him to save his abilities. Normally, he's going to have to use his 3 for sustain, but no longer. Inbound, trying to make his way in, but this is the exact part of the matchup he's going to struggle in. Pulled in by the Pillars of Agony. Polar Bear Mike drops down the River's Rebuke as well, but right into the back line goes Sino. He's got four members in front of him, but they just don't have the damage. Starting to finally push Ghost out with the blue buff invade already successful. Fine, okay, narrowly avoids a little bit more trouble. Still somehow clinging to life, but Wolfie rotating over the Chernabog, able to find the first kill, and they're not done yet. They want Mike, but good job using the Riptide to allow him to reposition. Look, that fight 100% was going Ghost Gaming's way until Sino got the loop around and was able to lock down four members for about a solid yeah. two seconds. And what he allowed I mean? Obey to rotate in, surround the entire the enemy team, and turn what was an already lost fight. They'd already lost it into a win for them. That's clean play. You can't rely on Sino to make four-man pushes happen like that all the time. Bobby gets out alive with the help of Ducky. The ultimate comes through. That's clean. Clean from Obey. But still, yep. all they did there was mitigate loss. They didn't pull back a huge win in their favor. And they were still looking at about a 1,500 gold deficit five minutes in. Already, they've started to fall behind in a pretty significant way. You're absolutely right to point that out there, Mifflin. I do want to give Inbound a little bit of credit for using the wall to prevent him from being pulled further into the Pillars of Agony, perhaps that having some relevance there for them in the fight. I like where his head's at, but so far, I think we're already starting to see shades of what could define this match later on. Amir is a bit punishable by just about everything Ghost has drafted at this point. Look, Finch, I, I don't want to raise the alarm bells just yet, but that <laughs> is a ring of Akate on fine, okay? Yes, I mean, no. I, I don't know what he's going to do to use it. Like, he's got to be auto-attacking, right? That's how you're yes. going to get the value out of it. But Hades has always had strong auto-attacks. If anyone is a fan of Divios, he's always said that Hades yep. has the easiest auto-attacks to land in the game. Maybe he finds the value now. He's 
gonna need it as inbound puts a gank onto the solo side wall to cut off the escape. So Fine OK turns right back around the kiss off the mark from Ducky, and that's essentially nixes any chances of a gank for the order side team on the solo side. A little bit of rotation from Sam, but no duress there for Fine OK, so they ease up. Blue Buff Invade was there last time, but Sino defends it. So Obey can breathe a bit easier, but Fine OK going back in. The ultimate from Sam was there as well with the Divine Judgment, but good use of the Undying Love to get Ducky out of there. So now Wolfie's here as well, a full-on party in the solo lane. It seems like the soul lane has had most of the focus from both teams here. And I just have to say, Ghost is benefiting from it greatly. Captain Twig's been allowed to free farm. Yeah, that's an Ola run. You don't want him getting the late game easily. Yeah, they're going to have to fight two Ring of Akates, I assume, because Captain Twig is certainly building one as well. And I do want to talk a little bit about how Hades does weave a lot of autos in with what he's doing. So, I mean, I think it makes some sense as Mike uses the River's Rebuke to lock in inbound. Not a world where the Amir can make it out of that. Another easy kill for Ghost. If Bobby finds himself in another sanctified field ever, his life is forfeit. He's got no way to escape it, except for maybe late game he could throw up a wall to just block out those autos. But as far as freezes go, or glacial strike, or anything he wants to do inside, it's easy to interrupt. Even if he finds Olderon on his own, it takes so long to channel the freeze on Ymir that Olderon can knock you up, slam you six times with auto attacks before you touch the ground again, and just, you lose your life. It's not going to work out at all. And that's why I was so surprised to see this Ymir taken so late in the draft. And yeah. failing that, even if Olderon's not looking at you, Ymir's going to have a very poor matchup and a nemesis. Having no mobility means that the slows that are generally weak CC for a jungler are going to be all that Nemesis needs. Stuart is stuck inside the stuns. Beads have to be used to get away from Panda Cat. We haven't talked much yet about the sub who's stepping in for Obey in a spot where obviously Wowie unable to compete here for this first game. And, and we were saying how I think maybe there's a little bit less pressures on Hunters here now more than ever in this meta. I wasn't expecting to be quite like this, where no one looks at them literally for nine minutes, but still, it, it does seem that as long as he can get away from this pressure from Panda Cat, he should be able to make it to the mid to late game pretty easily. And that might be it. You might have been hit the nail on the head here. Maybe Obey's shifting their focus towards this short lane, just so sure. it draws Ghost's attention away from Long, and they can fight around their core members. That's a pretty viable strategy, just so far it hasn't quite worked out. Ghost has just been slowly stripping away the map, stripping away buffs, playing around these fights slightly better, and the lead's growing. Panda Cat in trouble now, though. Wolfie has used this ultimate well, cuts off Panda Cat with some help from Sino, and the mid lane are able to find another kill. We haven't talked about this much either, but essentially, I think you could say we basically have two hunters in the middle lane here, right? Obviously, the Chernabog, but the magical ADC from Captain Twig. Are you surprised we don't see the more traditional mage picked up here? Uh, I am, especially considering how strong mages are right now. I would say that they're hitting their stride in Season 7. The Phase 2, mages are getting all that much more powerful. I mean, they've got so many more items allowing to them, and Ring of Kate just comes to mind in general. Now that I know that Hades is going to pick them up, we might see Ring of Kate <laughs> on everyone. This item is so absolutely strong, so instead of electing to take someone that could utilize it instead going for the Chernabog in mid, is going to allow him to rotate out very easily, he can escape the Sanctified field, he shouldn't have to worry about getting ganked, but as far as late game scaling goes, not too great. Ducky missed the kiss again, so he might be in trouble. Same for Captain Twig, even with the Sanctified Field, they're able to take him down. Ducky does eventually fall to the dive between Fine OK and Sam, and Mike able to turn things around and get the kill onto the Amirs. That means across the map, it's two for one in favor of Ghost. It is, but having Obey this grouped up on this side of the map means that Ghost have to stick around and be worried about the gold free. Panda Cat essentially TKO'd at this point. He has the healing available from Yamoja. If Obey want to, they can move towards gold and try and force a fight again with that numbers advantage. Instead, they're going to go back to farming. Keep an eye on the mid laners right now. 2 and 0 oh for Wolfie, but he's only got about a half level lead over an 0 oh and 1 Olderun because yep. Captain Twig's been allowed to free farm the entire time. It has made it much harder for any kind of substantial lead to be developed over this Ola run. And as good as Chernabog is, I just don't know what's things like Demonic Grip and Magus are online for Captain Twig. If Wolfie can match it, I think the itemization for Mage ADCs right now is just that much stronger. So this is potentially scary for Obey, but they have shown us that they came into this with a game plan. They have had solo side focus with multiple gank attempts over there. They recognize just now that they had a chance to catch Captain Twig out and find a kill there. This isn't the same Obey from Phase 1 who looked directionless. This Obey came in with a strat. 
They did, but it's a double-edged sword again. With Bobby essentially never going back to dual lane and hovering on that solo side, it leaves options like this available to Ghost, where gold is just going to go to them for free. Sure, Obey we'll might get Kyra. Pyromancer in return, but that's not a good trade. It really isn't. Just it's at not. this point in the game, the mobility from Pyromancer is relatively valueless, so they're just getting less gold and XP from their objective, and Ghost Gaming get free reign of the duo side of the map. This has been one of the failings of this strategy from Obey so far is that it feels like the left side of the map has been left a bit open and that might be where you want to spend the most attention. Sino could be in trouble. The link is there from Ducky to give him this extra life. Jumps out of the Pillar of Agony coming from the Hades but Sam still had the Divine Judgment. Fine, okay. Cuts down inbound. I like the idea here, Sino, but you're only buying yourself a little bit of time as Fine, okay, gets another kill onto Ducky. Sino falls as well and suddenly a three for zero for Ghost. I don't know if you saw Sino's shield disappear, but it did instantly because PVM <laughs> slammed him with the Sundering Spear. I mean, yeah. that survivability that you thought you had? No, you don't anymore. Good luck with that. Don't use it if PBM's in range and Sino loses out on his life and immediately once Sino's out of the fight, being that main pillar of Obey's team fight, the rest of their team's gonna fall as well. Now the tier 2 tower in right is being pressured. That's earned by Fine OK and, and Sam's pressure they've had in solo all game long. That is the tier 2 tower down. Mike is low, but Stuart couldn't find the Hail of Arrows. Leaps in and gets the auto even through the Riptide. But what about Twig? He's got Wolfie in trouble very late on the Bs. Maybe they just came off cooldown, but either way, that is it for Wolfie. They cannot keep up the dive, though, onto inbound underneath the tier 1 tower. So they'll just be one for one. That right there is exactly what I'm talking about. When you think of Olorun, you think he's going to be this late game hyper carry, but already he's got a tier 1 ring and ring of Akate available to him. He's shredding anyone that stands in front of him. Wolfie took maybe 4, 5 auto attacks there and immediately loses his life. And sitting inside Sanctified Field, Bobby was of no use. He couldn't do anything. It couldn't even block autos. He couldn't walk in the way because he was so slowed. That's going to be rough and it's going to have to be something Obey addresses in the future. If Captain Twig's allowed to survive in these fights, if he's not the first target obeys diving onto i don't see how they win a team fight well gore spent a lot of time talking about how good typhon spang is right now and i think fine okay is happy to show him the evidence right away that's what he backs up this akate with in his build it does give you the percent penetration obviously but it's so big in terms of amplifying your life steal with hades already does so well this build from fine okay even though it's relatively light on prots he only really has the sovereignty i think it still makes it pretty effectively tanky he is going to be incredibly hard to kill. The second he uses that ultimate, he's going to be healing for 60, maybe 70 per tick per person inside of it. He's also going to get the mitigations from channeling the Pillars of Agony. He's got yeah. Sovereignty online to help out his team if they want to group up on him. The, I mean, his damage output's phenomenal as well. Hades is looking like a very meta pick. Yeah, fine, okay, making it look good right now as Obey Alliance get a bit aggressive, looking for the red buff invade, Twig in trouble, but fine, okay, shows up like a hero from the wings and locks down inbound, not enough for the kill, but Captain Twig suddenly healthy, ready to rejoin the fight, and Ducky could be the one that ends up paying the price, great ultimate from Polar Bear Mike to lock Ducky back in, and PBM will get the kill he earned. What about the tier one tower? Ghost had grouped underneath it, five men strong, burned down the tower, and continue to move around the map, taking whatever they want from Obey's jungle. And there's nothing Obey can do about it. Bobby at level 11, no second relic available to him, means that he, again, is just going to get absolutely decimated every single team fight. Ducky moves in and is able to save Bobby's life, but trades his own in exchange. That's pretty low value. This Aphrodite is sitting at 0 and 4. You, when you think of Afro, you're thinking of a generally pretty safe pick, but since he couldn't pick up the beads, he couldn't get the Aegis like you would normally see from Afro mid, instead he goes for teleport and the shell. He's more team fight oriented. He could rotate around the map a lot better, but with this deficit already two levels down, wherever he goes, he's not winning the engagement. This Afro yep. is going to have a very hard time making his way to level 20. And it's not a lot of anti-heal online that's been doing it. This Cursed Onk just comes in from Mike, but they've been bodying this Afro for the most part without it. Sino falls as well in the mid lane as Fine OK gets the better of him. He's done with solo lane. The tier 2 and tier 1 tower are down at this point, so he is just a roaming level 16 threat you have to deal with at all times. But Myth, talk to me about this, Nike, about this Nemesis jungle build. It's the Golden Blade Warrior Tab I Toxic Blade Malice. Do you like this? I'm actually so glad you brought it up because I 
think Malice is potentially the most slept on crit item in the game. I, I, I can't build it without someone complaining at me, but if you just look at it, it's got such good stats. 40 power, 25% crit, and cooldown. That's a stat stick that you want on just about any jungler. And the That's passive true. is so strong. The second this ne Nemesis moves in, dashes in to close the distance, uses slice and dice to set him up, lands a couple crits, that's three seconds off of all those cooldowns. It's going to get so much value. Nemesis traditionally is, once her dashes are down, we have to go on her because she's got just about no survivability left after that. With Malice, it's going to be really hard to keep track of those cooldowns. It is going to be difficult. You might have thought you were safe, but Nemesis is already a pretty widely one, even without that extra cooldown math. They're trying to do good wall from inbound, but that's one of the few people that can just walk away. Polybri Mike does not use the Sunder on the Nike Ultimate this time. Now it comes out to try and lock him down, but it might have been too late. Panda Cat's in trouble. Sino falls, as does Ducky, though. A double kill for Captain Twig as they get inbound to all of them locked inside that Pillar of Agony. I'm sure they don't mind training, trading Panda Cat for three members of Obey. Look, I said it earlier, Obey, if you're focusing anyone that isn't Captain Twig, it's a misplay. Immediately we saw the majority of Obey dive onto Panda Cat, Sanctified Field comes down, and he just turns into a chainsaw from a distance, ripping through everyone grouped up, and no one Obey could move, no one on Obey could jump out, because they used everything to close the gap. It's just a weird timed fight for Obey to choose to go in there, especially considering Gold Fury is up. I understand the thought process. They want to get the kill, move back to Gold, and try to force a fight there. It just didn't work out. Stewart kind of putting the hands to find OK here, and he doesn't even get the heal off. Stewart does still use both relics in fear. I think probably wouldn't deny a potential heal to Fine OK just to show how much respect he's earned at this point. But all is well. They get the kill onto Fine OK either way. And this is the great thing about us coming into this new meta. There's so many builds to try and keep up with. I'm falling behind a little bit, but the Berserker Shield picked up for Wolfie. This is an item you heard me talk about in the SPL waiting room and how I think it's strong on these hunters right now. Do you like it picked up third here when you've got a Nemesis jungle on the other side? I, I would have liked to see it. If you want to go for the Berserker Shield, traditionally we see it towards the first item very early on in the build. It's going to help him out a lot once he does fall low. And against Nemesis, it is pretty good. Nemesis is going to drop that burst damage instantly, take about 30% of your health bar. So anything afterwards should be able to proc that shield for him. But Berserker Shield in general on Chernobog, he's not going to be trying to fight at low health. He doesn't have the lifesteal to sustain through it. Panda Cat in trouble, goes back in and drops the suns, perhaps recognizing there was no world where he lived, so he tried to put out the maximum amount of damage. But look at this Robe Bay. They say to hell with trying to split up and farm. We've got a group at this point. Ghosts are 9,000 gold ahead, and right now it's working. But I don't know if they can brute force down this tier 2 tower. Fine, okay, tries to get to the back line. Frozen right away, does get the Pillar of Agony off, but is it going to be enough for him? Captain Twig in the back still has the damage. They take care of two, and oh, Obey Alliance's new strategy has not worked. Sam gets the slice and dice onto two members, able to battle through Stewart. It costs him his life, but sets up for the rest of the squad to clean the rest of the kills up. Look, credit where it is due. Fido K jumps in to engage that fight, and Stewart perfectly lands the axe to make sure that no follow-up comes through. Fido can't, can't use his three, can't start channeling the ultimate, doesn't fear anyone, but the burst damage just wasn't there from Obey. They were able to drop him to about 20%, Which and having him not die there means that well, you just lost the fight. You blew your entire kits onto this tanky, lifesteal focused Hades. He's and then that again, He's Captain Twig shows up. He's uh, look, that we're, we're talking about effective tankiness, that, okay. bitch. With all this lifesteal, <laughs> Ring of Akate, the Shoes of Magi, the Typhon's Fang, my man is going to lifesteal more than any defense would have mattered to him. But it just, it's they true. couldn't do it. They just couldn't finish him off. And then what happens happened again. Every single team fight, Captain Twig rotates in late and gets free casting rights on every member of Obey. And speaking of Captain Twig, we saw Doug point this out earlier as well, just haven't had a chance to hit on it yet, that he started working on some physical defense. I thought this might have been a breastplate of Valor. It's something pretty common we see on our mid lane mages. But instead, he was the hide of the Nemean Lion. This has got to be, I'm thinking, to help him out with this nemesis. And I think it's something that we'll see a little bit more on these mages in the middle lane when they're worried about these auto-attack assassins from the jungle. Auto attack assassins as well as the double hunter from Obey. I mean, it's going to get value, but with there's so many people trying to auto attack you, those stacks aren't going to last very long. I like the pickup on to this uh, Captain Twig in particular just because he knows if he does tank up a couple of auto attacks, it could cost him his life. Instead, now he drops Sanctified Field, knocks up, and just runs away, uses that time to survive. 
It's another good wall from inbound, but it just does not matter. Sino dies instantaneously in the back line, and they've got to run. They cannot afford to fight Ghost with the Fire Giant buff on everyone but Sam. It's too strong, and inbound has been isolated in the middle lane, avoids the stun from Panda Cat, but Captain Twig's on the warpath as well. A wall will allow him some breathing room as Ducky and Wolfie were in trouble and left. The Undying Love has to come out from the Aphrodite as they continue to retreat. They know at this point they cannot afford to stand and fight Ghost in the jungle. They just can't. Speaking of Aphrodite, take a peek at Ducky's build. No items in particular are interesting, except for the fact that he doesn't have any items. He's only four in. This Afro yeah. is struggling. It really is, and that's been a result of Final Case pressure in solo, but what about the pressure onto the mid Phoenix? Obey only have four members here to defend, and very few ultimates to work with. Wolfie in trouble right away, can't even return fire because of Thorns. That's a ton of space created, and Ghost burned down the middle Phoenix easily, but Final K will not settle for that. Continues to push forward, looking for inbound. The Riptide continues to pull him back in, but they don't have the damage. Ghost Gaming are on the run after getting their Phoenix. I mean, call it on the run. I'll call it a victory lap for Ghost Gaming at this point. <laughs> 14,000 gold, 22 minutes in. But Obey have been fighting in incredibly well. It doesn't always seem like they're just going to lose out on these engagements. But despite all that, despite all these perfectly placed mechanical plays, this lead is making itself known just by the fact that no one on the side of Ghost Gaming is really falling in these engagements. Nemesis already picked up the Wind Demon. Movement speed, attack speed, crit, everything you need Nemesis has in this build so far. I'll be surprised to see if he doesn't elect to go towards a more penetration-focused item once he sells the Assassin's Blessing. But Captain Twig just decides to finish up his build. Sixth item, gonna lock in that Typhon Fang. Additional penetration, additional lifesteal. That passive's gonna get a lot of value when you've already got lifesteal on your boots and you have it on the Ring of Akate. Run is going to chunk anybody. No one's allowed to tank more than six auto attacks from this guy. And we haven't even touched on the fact that he's the only magical ADC that crits. He is doing insane right. burst damage already as well. You're absolutely right. This is going to be scary trying to deal with him. We haven't had much chance to talk about these Hunter builds yet because they really have not had that much to do with how the game has gone, kind of as we predicted. But we are starting to see some of those changes that show up in their build as well. No Executioner picked up by either Hunter. Instead, you see the Atlantis bow slotted in oftentimes where the Executioner would have been. And that's your percent pen item. You're going to pick that up in that slot a lot. We see Panda Cat go the Ikvio Kin size afterwards, a much more attack speed focused build as opposed to Stuart, who's doing pretty standard Uller things, which is you just want to buy almost every item in the pantry. I, I like the build from Stuart. I mean, that's about as standard as it gets. Sliding into Atalanta's that late in the build is a bit of a question mark. If you're going to go towards that sure. ability focus build, I'd prefer to see maybe something along the lines of Titan's Bane, something that works like that. Sam for soccer fighting too, uses the Nemesis shield well, but now he's in trouble, avoids the hits from Sino. How is Sam still alive? But there's no way he lives, right? Meanwhile, the rest of Ghost are pressuring in left. They've already gotten the Phoenix inbound low as well, so the Undying Love forced out, but the Pillar of Agony has caught in too. Stewart falls first, Ducky is right there behind him, and somehow Sam still stands tall. A perfect fight across the map from Ghost Gaming as they surge onto the Titan of Obey Alliance. This might be game one over already. Uh, we're looking at a 60% on the Titans' health right now, and we gotta talk about PBM's Riptides. They're decimating Obey. They don't know where to run because there is nowhere to run. Ghost Gaming, 25 minutes on the clock, win our very first game here in the SPL Phase 2. And if this is how it's looking right now, I'm excited for this to continue. Look, uh, I didn't know that we were going to keep track of our votes as casters for these games. Uh, I didn't know that Inbound was going to pick Ymir so late into the draft into that Ghost Gaming draft. Uh, if I want to go on record and change my vote now, Ghost is looking dominant. There was not a single <laughs> point in that game where I thought Obey was turning it around. I would like to give some credit to Stewart there as well, man. I don't think that he played particularly poorly. In fact, he played well. I just think it was kind of out of his hands as far as it goes for a sub. So I don't think you look too bad with that Obey pick. But either way, we'll get it back over to the desk. Enjoyed uh, game number one. It, it, it's been a little bit there. Uh, you know, we... Uh... It's been a minute, so I figured I'd catch up on some, some fan mail here and uh, and really work through some of this with you guys. Uh, the first one says, hey, Dolson, uh, we love your casting. Please keep it up. Oh, thanks, guys. It's a very, very nice first one there. Uh, the next one, uh, Dolson, we love your casting and your chair ads, uh, is what I would say if it were opposite, Dale. That's a bummer. Here's the third one. Hey, Dolson, make sure to remind the people to use code SMITEMAX 
uh, for free embroidery. Everyone, make sure to go to uh, to needforseat.com. Use code SMITEMAX, and you get free name embroidery on your chair. Uh, and then the uh, the fourth and final one. Hey, Dolson, we are happy to send you a chair. Uh, we are hoping that means you'll stop leaving 3 a.m. voicemails in our office asking for a free Hera-themed chair. So that one's... Um, I don't know where that one came from. Uh, Gore, Gore Miser, uh, I'll, I'll levy the question to you, though. Uh, what did you see here in game one uh, that gave Ghost Gaming the win? Oh, my God. So, so many different things that stand out there. And it's really difficult to jump into what goes best and maybe what was for, first and foremost at the front. But it's kind of hard not to talk about fine OK at that point. I mean, a good slash line on the Hades. He brought it in against Aphrodite, of all things, and it ended up working out really well for him. Straight into the lifesteal boots, then he goes Ring of Akate, then he goes Typhon's Fang. Already with so much healing in his kit from Devour Souls just makes it intrinsically difficult for anyone to keep up with his healing to the point where I think Finch called it out, Mifflin called it out. His effective tankiness was the fact that he would heal, you'd hit him, you could take him down to halfway and within a second, maybe two seconds, which is a very quack, quick amount of time, he'd be back to full health. He had no worries whatsoever over there. Once he got that sovereignty online, forget about trying to melt him down. I think he was just so tanky. He goes for that Thorns as well. I mean, he played it exactly the way you needed him to, to go 7-2. and two. Yeah, the, the early game just kind of got out of control here, and, and I think a conversation to be had around Ring of Hikate here as well. This is really where it started, Gore. Uh, three minutes into yes. the game, Final K receives a gank, gets first blood over onto Ducky, and this Hades just kind of snowballed out of control. Ended up picking up the Ring of Hikate, as I mentioned. Obviously, Finch and Mifflin uh, maybe scratching their heads a little bit at that one. But maybe this is just such a good item that if you're able to build it, you might need to. Yeah, honestly, I think it showcases, like you said, where the item is good, and maybe just how good it's going to be. If you're picking it up on Hades, who, well, maybe he's not a, a quote-unquote auto-attacker the way that Freya is, or Kronos, or Olorun is, it does still apply for Hades in his kit. Just being able to put that Blight onto your enemies and have that ready for any time that you use your Devour Souls, I think it's going to work out incredibly well for them. The fact that he was also using Shroud of Darkness, getting that silence mm -hmm. appropriately timed to help lock down Afro, so either A, you can't heal, or B, you can't ult fast enough, it made it so much easier to use that Pillar of Agony to lock her down, and her effectiveness tanked because of that. And granted, maybe there's somewhere in there that you could look at, well, how do you how do you pick up for it? If Aphrodite's not doing well, theoretically Nike can, right? But PBM goes into that Sunder. It's destroying the Nike shield yep. the minute she ults. They just... Uh, Obey came in with a phase one strat, and Ghost just phase two the hell out of it <laughs> and destroy it. Yeah, as if we expected anything different. Uh, from Ghost here in game number one. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a quick break prior to game number two. We'll see you back here. Appreciate the patience, everybody. Welcome back to day one of phase two of season seven of the SPL Gormizer. Uh, we, we saw a 25 minute game number one that saw Ghost yeah. just kind of blow Obey out of the mm -hmm. water. We talked a little bit about the composition <laughs> that Ghost brought to the table. Haven't quite talked about Obey's yet. The double hunter mindset. We figured we might see with one magical ADC and one normal ADC, uh, but it was the double hunter, traditional hunter, I suppose, composition there for Obey. Uh, do you think that has really any merit in the current meta? Honestly, I don't know that it's going to continue working or work at all, I guess, at this point. Specifically, well, I think for Ghost, I should say, it's going to work fine, right? I, having a magical <laughs> hunter come through, I completely, I was thinking on Obey's side, uh, not good for Obey, good for Ghost. And, and you know, the yes. thing I wrote, like, literally one of the last things I wrote was, turns out, Ghost is still just good at Smite, huh? I don't know that it matters much of what they're going to play there. I think the double hunter, the, the fact that Ring of Hakate is just so damn good. You could bring in an Ola run. You could bring in a Freya if she doesn't get banned. You could bring in a Soul. I, I mean, I've been looking for clues here, Dave, and, and trying to figure out what <laughs> exactly. And my notes all point specifically towards the fact that, that what was working best for Obey, specifically coming in as that Nike in yep. Phase 1, it's out the window now, just like the notebook is. It, it, you, nothing that you had written down for Phase 1, I think, is going to apply here. You have to come in with a new strap. 
Got a good arm there, Gorf. That made it all the way out. Where did the, that go? Uh, window on the other side of the room. I don't know. He's got to find it. We'll give him a second. Picks and bends though oh, for game number two, and see what these two teams opt to swing for. Remember, uh, the Cthulhu ban was something we figured we might see. Uh, Persephone as well. Haven't I mean outside of Nemesis, obviously an interesting jungle pick uh, for the the first bit of data we have out of the jungle. Haven't really seen the presence, whether it be in the ban phase or in the pick phase for some of the other traditional auto-attacking junglers that we figured we might see. Yeah, I was actually surprised. Uh, I mean, Nemesis obviously worked well there, and I think against Obey's composition, it is fit perfectly, right? Granted, it, you know, it comes up, there's three things working, or two things working against Nemesis there, maybe a third one, which is her ultimate timer. It's on 100 seconds. You've got 110 seconds on that upgraded Sunder that PBM was running, and then you've got the, the Nemesis ult in the event the Sunder's not ready, along with that shield, the healing from Yamoja, the lifesteal from Ring of Akate on Ola Run and Hades. Uh, you couldn't choose a single target to kill. If you weren't winning a team fight, you're, you're not winning anything here. And yep. so I think Obey are going to have to change up I mean, a lot of where their focus is, and honestly, a lot of where they are and who they are at heart, <laughs> because, because a lot of that identity felt like an Obey composition, and Ghost dismantled it. I mean, and maybe it all comes down to the fact that Fine OK got level 5 just a smidge there before Aphrodite to make that really good gank happen early on, but I think there's a lot of layers underneath that as well, where Ghosts are, right now, they're just well, being Ghost. Yeah, it, you know, it, we, we sort of talked preseason as a, as a talent team and you know, obviously through some content pieces like who would be most improved and you know obey is kind of an easy answer there because they have the most ground to to improve on I would argue ghosts don't they're the opposite they, they're already like kind of where they want to be obviously can continue <laughs> to be better but this is going to be such a difficult first matchup for obey especially given uh, their substitute standpoint here not out of it just yet though remember these are best of three so a chance for obey to go back to back and take this set over Ghost Gaming. Freya makes it through oh, the ban no. phase, Gourmizer, and it looks like oh, Ghost no. might be opting for Freya here with their second overall pick. Pair that one with Yamoja, and Ghost got more of the same from game number one. Mercy. All right, Dave, so I'm ready to go ahead and go into the second set of the day. I'm going to start <laughs> talking about E United because there, I just, I, yeah. you get Yamoja back, you get Freya, and with these new items, Freya, like, already passive lifesteal that comes through. Looks good, real, like, already there. Two to three shot people when you get your item build online. Like, late game, she's a monster. Early game, yeah, maybe you, you have to hold on a little bit in lane. Your first two, three minutes, five minutes might not be the cleanest. You're going to have to sit back. You've got your mojo beside you, though, so your clear is going to be fine. Your healing is going to be fine. They can honestly still take fights early on against this Ulir if they want to. Maybe second guess it with the Ymir there, so you might want to you know, kind of check yourself right. before you jump into it. And then she gets Ring of Akate online. And at that point in time, I do not <laughs> see Obey having a very fun game for the remaining however many minutes after that. Once that Ring of Akate comes online for Freya, it is, I think, going to severely hurt the members of Obey. Nuwa, who's going to have a difficult time trying to escape her anyway, it's going to be downhill. Then you go into a hastened ring, and all of a sudden she's chasing you down. You're Ymir, it doesn't matter if you slow her. You can try to freeze her. If she has her beads up, she might just pop it to keep chasing the kill. That's going to be priority number one, target number one. And honestly, it's going to be difficult because, yeah, maybe Hunters aren't making the big swing right now, but if you're focusing this Freya, that means Sam on this Nemesis can pop off. Fine, okay, with whatever yep. he decides to run, can pop off and look good doing it. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, the Ola run was one of many issues, I suppose, in game number one, and, and more of the same for Ghost Gaming. A lot of those issues re-picked up here through the first three picks for Ghost Gaming. They, uh, they being Obey, seem to think that this is going to be a Freya over in the long lane. Traditional mages now being banned out against Captain Twig there by Obey. Remember, it was a Ho Yi in the long lane with the Ola run in the mid lane there in game number one. Fele's banned out, and Gore, maybe most interestingly so far, it's a set ban for Ghost Gaming with their fifth and final. Now, I think Set, especially with a lot of the new items, he works well with it. I mean, one, being able to potentially bring in something like a Serrated Edge and pick that up is very solid for him early on. You can get those cooldowns kind of out of there. His damage at the very beginning is going to help burst you down. Then he can follow up with some auto attacks. He is definitely up there, I think, with Pele in terms of, of rising... Well, just junglers all, all of a sudden. Assassins that maybe yep. couldn't have worked too well before that are going to come in. Much, I think, like this Nemesis can qualify herself as... 
And I'm hoping, I'm wondering what Obey are going to log in. The Chaka is definitely throwing me, not necessarily for a loop. I think he's going to be interesting. But the Nox is what I was waiting for. It's either a Chaka or a Nox in the jungle. Uh, <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I think, I if I had to you prefer one, it is the Chaka. But it's in an the interesting shape. Yes. I will say, I, I again, I don't remember exactly when the, the content piece is coming out. This Nox in the solo lane is something Ducky has told me he's comfortable with. So yeah. if I'm if I'm taking kind of old data points and conversations I've had, it, it might actually be this Nox in the solo lane. A Thor to round out the Ghost Gaming draft in the jungle there hmm. for Sam for Soccer. Gore, the, the Phase 2 meta continues here. Maybe Obey have dipped into it just a little bit. You like one composition over the other for game two. I like where Obey's head is at. Be with between the Chalk and the Nox, there's going to be a lot of silences along with the Ymir freeze and the stun coming down from Nuwa. You could theoretically control the pace of a team fight. That being said, a lot of these things are going to need to not only connect, but you're going to have to work them together. Nox, you can't afford to miss your combo. Chalk, you've got this nice big ultimate, but if it only hits two people, the other three that are standing by in a teamfight are still going to shred you. I think their head's in the right place. It's all going to be execution, and that's where things yep. fall apart for me. I think Ghost do not let you execute your draft at, <laughs> at the highest level. That's why they are number one. You can pick whatever you want. They tend to tear you down. And I think with all the damage on there, I mean, a Habwa, a Thor, a Nemesis, they're just going to melt through the members of Obey. Well, it's time for Obey to turn this one around. Game number two, Finch and Myth. Who do you think comes out on top? Thank you, Dolson and Gore on the desk. You know, Myth, I knew we'd have to talk about Freya at some point, but I did not think we'd be talking about Freya on the second pick team. A bit surprising to me that Obey don't ban it and pick the Uller over it, but perhaps they can show us a way to keep this Freya in check. What do you think here, Myth? Was this one lost in picks and bans, or do you like what Obey have? Look, Obey's draft is, as Gore pointed out, incredibly execution focused. Every single one of these picks has decent CC, but not a single one of them has the kill potential on their own. If Ymir finds a freeze, if Stuart finds an axe, it's going to take a lot more than just those individual pieces to find these kills, and they're going to have to work through all sorts of stuff. The second that Panic Hat gets his ultimate available, you're going to have to work through that. Beads and Aegis as well. Ducky's going to be having a, an equally hard time on this Nox, I'd say. He, I've seen it a lot on his stream. If you keep track of Ducky's Twitch, he's playing this pick and rank an awful lot, and it, he's seen some pretty moderate success with it, but even then, this is Ghost Gaming. This is the Phase one champion, so this is going to be very hard for Obey to find a footing. It's going to be difficult. I mean, I, I just think that this same draft could work against an easier opponent. I mean, Freya Yamojas, the top two picks for Ghost, it feels like something has gone critically wrong from where I'm sitting if that's how the other team gets to draft their top two picks. But perhaps Obey can show us a way to slow down all of this momentum. Remember, Freya's still not quite that powerhouse state until she has Hakate and her ult. There's action already in mid, but Twig and Sam for soccer are able to navigate it deftly and end up without being in too much trouble. Look, Obey's entire strategy has to revolve around shutting down Panda Cat in the early game. The second that he hits level 12 and gets Aegis, he gets the Ring of Akate as well. This god is going to be nigh uncontestable. I don't think a single three members of Obey's draft can take on Panda Cat once he starts to hit stride in his build. That said, pre-5, Freya's a little bit weaker. Still, he's going to have pretty decent life steal, sustain, and damage. He's got all that. But as far as survivability goes, this Freya is going to be struggling. It's going to be up to Stuart and Inbound to make sure that this doesn't get rolling. But what about this Warrior Jungle kick that Sino is on? I certainly understand with the Nike, but this Chalk Jungle is not something that we that we see very often. I mean, I thought perhaps it might be going to solo lane, but Sino has shown that he likes to play these Warriors here. How do you expect this Chalk, this chalk to do in this matchup? Chalk is going to have decent damage. He's going to have sustain throughout the jungle. He's going to do the majority of the same things. It's going to be completely reliant, again, on that ultimate. He has to find those ultimates to just silence out the enemy, get the burst damage out, and pray that his mid laner, Wolfie, is able to finish up the kills. Chalk's got so much damage on his own, and inbound picks up first blood. Chalk has so much damage on his own that even if someone does escape away from him, Wolfie on this new wash should be able to pick up the kill with the ultimate. But that said... Chalk isn't going to outscale Nemesis. Chalk isn't going to outscale the soul lane Thor. Again, Obey's draft is telling me that they're trying to win quick and early. 
Chalk is how you do that. It's not a bad way to start either when you can find first blood in the middle lane. Twig did not have the beads available and inbound with the oldest trick in the book, waited around the corner and found the freeze when Twig stepped up too far. So a much better way for Obey to start this game. Remember back in game one, Myth, Ghost wasn't just beating them in every lane. They had duo or solo side pressure. They were invading the blue buff essentially on cooldown, and that's what really got fine so far ahead of Ducky on that Aphrodite pick. Maybe if they can start getting some pressure in other areas, they can prevent a, a run back of the same thing that went wrong in the first game. I don't even think that Ghost's strategy here is that same level of pressure because they were afforded so many late game high tier pieces. I don't think <laughs> Ghost cares if this game goes 40 minutes. They have a Hawa and they have a Freya. Yomoja scales incredibly well. Nemesis scales incredibly well into the late game. If Ghost wins out early, power to them. They shouldn't have. If Ghost takes it to late game, power to them. That's exactly where they want to be. Again, a, a lot of the onus is on Obey to make sure that things start going very well in the early because the second they all get the late game, the five on five engagements, Ghost Gaming should be able to run away with it with a draft that they have. I think you might be a bit worried about some of those picks from Obey if things do end up getting a bit later on in this game. So you imagine they want things skewed a bit early. We might finally see some duo lane action as Inbound looks for another surprise gank. Pandacax taking a ton of damage. Good patience on the freeze and the fray is in trouble. But in comes the shielding. Pandacat hits level 5. So Valkyrie Discretion is here as well. And Ghost Gaming get their first kill. We said get there before she's 5. But I guess if she turns 5 in the middle of the fight, we could forgive her. That was unparalleled trigger discipline from Panda Cat. I love it. He just keeps auto-attacking the wave knowing that his survive condition is by a little bit a little bit of time with the life steal that he already has and to just get to level 5 so he can ult out of a sticky situation. I love the play. Mike uses the river's rebuke to lock down Sino, but his only Chuck can able to teleport to that axe and make his way out of there without too much trouble. He ends up using the blink as well. He did go blink Chuck to try and start this game off, and it helps him get a little bit further away from trouble there. But you talked about this already. I mean, if you want to try and stop Freya, it feels like it has to happen early. And I think inbound it obeyed a lot of things right. They were so patient with their freezes and spacing out their CC, but it just wasn't enough. Yeah, the counter-rotation from Ghost Game immediately. The shell lands on a Panda Cat. The healing from Yamoja. There was too much damage from the burst through there. And now Freya, backed up, is going to be able to get the full boots if Panda Cat so chooses, or can immediately move in a Ring of Akate for that early yep. trade potential. Instead, yeah, Ring of Akate is online. The Uller matchup into Freya now. If Uller doesn't kill Freya with the initial ability rotation, I don't care if he's on 5% health afterward, Panda Cat's going to get just about a full heal off of a wave. It's going to be tough for him now. Inbound still, though, lurking around the corner. This has been a lot of their strategy around this Amir pick, because this is twice in a row that Inbound has picked Amir with a lot of really good Guardians still out there. Ganesh and Kepri come to mind, even some of the other aggressive supports like Hercules, but they have wanted this Amir. He's going to have to show us more of this value of waiting around in the jungle, finding good walls, making sure they can lock down the right people with these freezes, or otherwise the Amir pick is absolutely not worth it. It isn't. But the recent Ymir buffs do make it a little bit easier to execute on. You can get rid of the wall if you so choose. Even if you die yeah. while channeling the ultimate, you're going to get a percentage of that damage. This ain't the way to start, though, Bobby. Yeah, Panda Cat able to use the ultimate, get out of any and all trouble very easily. Slow use from range to prevent inbound from closing the gap. And you're starting to see what can make Freya so difficult to gank. She did not have beads there. That was a well-timed gank from inbound in terms of keeping that cooldown in his mind. But it's just so hard to kill her, which he has the Valkyrie's discretion. It is. I was surprised to see Sam for Soccer decide to back off of that engagement after the ultimate came through, just immediately walks away. Panda Cat found a huge amount of damage on the inbound there, was easily within kill range if he had any assistance. Instead, Ghost Gaming played a little bit slow, play it safe, don't overcommit. They knew that Sino was in the jungle, he showed up on a ward, so instead they just go back to farming, which should be their strategy, they have a Freya. More trouble now as Sam for Soccer looks to try and grab Stuart. Gets the beads out from him, but will not continue the chase underneath the tower. Inbound meets him in the jungle, but Sam not worried about one lone Amir all by himself. As the dive underneath the right side, Tier 1 is underway. Sino ends up trading his life to get the kill on to Fine. Okay, I don't know. I mean, sure, he shut him down, but you want your jungler up and farming. 
You do. I would say that's a decent trade if your effort is trying to put Ducky ahead. He should be able to force Final K into missing about two or three minions there, but even then, Nox is not a god you pick into soul lane so that she can rotate out. That's a god that's going to be sitting over there, farming up as much as it possibly can, and then rotate in once the late game starts to roll around. Get ready for these team fights. Putting Ducky ahead this early on in the match, especially at the cost of your own life, might be a slight misplay, especially considering Sam for Soccer is playing Nemesis, this late game hyper carry. Chalk, Sino has to stay afloat. I would say at this point, you would really want to see the Chalk ahead. You would, and, and, and I think that Fine OK certainly messed up the math there from Sino. I think he expected to get out because of just how low Fine OK was, but Fine OK somehow was able to buy a ton of time on low HP and still make it out, so good work to him, at least in that regard, of buying as much time as possible and guaranteeing the return kill. You talked earlier about how Obey had a good start to this game, but you can tell already the gold is really close to being even back up, the experience too, and now Fine OK ganking like a jungler into his own lane, dunk it right down on on top of Ducky, perfectly spacing the CC. Just not enough damage to kill through that Celestial Legion Helm, but they're gonna dive underneath the tower. The ultimate comes out from the Noxus Silence. Is there too? Ducky still standing even now, but there's just no world where he survives when they're willing to commit that many resources. And then Wolfie picks up the kill on the tail end with the ultimate. That was a, a well-executed tower dive there. Fido K doesn't move in himself. Instead, just soaks up the aggro from the tower to create some space and allow Sam for Soccer to maneuver around. But Ducky finds his abilities, as you have to do on the Nox, and is able to turn it yep. into a one-for-one. One. Clean play, but even then, Obey needs more. Crushing wave a little bit off the mark there from Twig. That would certainly have been a solo kill in the Wolfie, and you could tell he wants it now. Diving underneath the tier one tower, trying to find this kill and gets it. Wolfie ends up falling. A lot of tower dive happening as Captain Twig has certainly thrown his life away at this point. Inbound is the one that's on the chase here for him as he tries to come back underneath the tier one tower. He might be able to get away. He's got speed buff. He's quick. He's got speed buff and the water carpet. With the pathing he's taken, I think he's decided that it, there's really not worth the risk. Instead, trade out my life or try and sneak it back. Four. A little bit greedy, but no one's able to confirm it. That's a well-played back from Captain Twig. He knows, okay, if someone does show up, I'm going to sacrifice myself. If no one shows up, I get out alive. Clean play. And it, it's just disrespectful play from Ghost. I would say of their four <laughs> kills, three have been tower dives just individually within their own lanes. Twig walked in alone with no backup into the tier one mid tower, just turned it around. Ghost Gaming is looking to send a message. It feels that way, trying to let Obey know that nowhere is safe for them at this point in the game. Still, though, the charts tell us that this is a relatively even match, but you've already kind of done this analysis for me here, Myth. Ghosts are okay with an even early game because they are so heavily favored in the late just due to their composition and how well they scale into that portion of the game. Obey Alliance are going to need to find a little bit more pressure. They want to turn this around as a well-placed ward spots out Sam's positioning on the right side of the map. But Obey's got a lead in the duo lane right now, but it looks like they're trying to force the fight in mid instead. The ultimate is forced from Nuwa. And Ducky drops early. Rivers of Bucus locked two members underneath the tier one towers. Panda Cat getting the better of Stewart despite the experience deficit. Obey start to rotate to the left. They're trying to leave mid, but they walk right back into Twig and Mike's waiting arms. A good breeze comes out, but Twig has the beads. No ultimate though, and Stewart gets the return kill. Now Mike is stuck in between several members, but the Freya comes in from the backside. Wolfie gets one kill. Panda Cat gets the second. Sam able to melt Wolfie, and so far a three for two in favor of Ghost, and they still got the Freya up if they can lock down Sino. Look, and the chase is still on. If the whoop is available and it connects with anybody, it could result in a kill for Ghost, but instead, Panda Cat's going to go ahead and give up on the chase. Sam's going to strip away some of that jungle farm. I said last game to Obey, if you're not focusing Ola Run, you're going to lose the fight. You can switch it now. If you're not focusing Panda Cat on this Freya, you're going to lose the fight. If any sort of CC is being used and it's not finding its home on Freya, that means that's free cast time. It's free damage for this Freya. We saw that three auto attacks was enough to do about 50% of Sino's health bar. Three auto attacks did about 50% of inbounds as well. Panda Cat needs to be the priority from Obey in these engagements. Taking a look at the support builds here, Myth, because builds, I think, have to be the big storyline coming in here after the mid-season update. It looks like Polar Bear Mike has chosen to forego the Gauntlet of Thebes, largely considered the best item a support can get here at this point, especially if they're not physical and can't pick up something like Sledge. Do you like the Urchin being picked up with how aggressive they've been playing? 
it's the only thing that would make up for this pickup, right? If you're going to play as aggressive as Ghost has, has been, you're going to get those stacks online pretty quickly. And just take a peek at the Thebes 4 inbound. We're 13 minutes in the game just about, and he has it halfway stacked. That means that he hasn't really had much time to farm because of the pace set in this match. Ghost and Obey are constantly looking for dives, so this Urchin should get more relative value the longer this game goes on. Interesting from Ghost. Perhaps this aggressive all-in gas pedal strat is something that's coming a, a little bit more top-down than we may have thought just off the build. And look at this! Sam again showing presence in solo, but Mike in trouble too. Able to use that Riptide to reposition, gets away from the wall from inbound. And that has got to be pretty close to the best-case scenario. A wall to lock in some immobile characters, and even still, Obey can't convert it. I would be surprised if Inbound doesn't elect to level his wall second over the Freeze just because of all the immobile targets on the side of Ghost. We saw that that lockdown was good, but the wall just didn't last long enough. Another good wall. That means the Freeze connects onto Captain Twig, who's in an awful position. Does get the crushing wave off for next to zero value. Avoids getting hit by the ultimate from one, but the second from Wolfie is that much better. But straight up and down goes Fine OK, trying to dunk into the backline. But Obey still standing relatively strong. They have pushed Ghost back out and gotten a free pick. This is huge for the order side team. And look at Stewart feeling himself point blank up against Panda Cat, but that's risky. He does not have the Valkyrie's discretion, but gets some help from Sam to turn the fight and now Wolfie in trouble too, but Stewart's still there, finds the damage, puts Panda Cat down, Wolfie will fall as well as it continues to be a bloodbath across the map. Let that be a lesson to Stewart and the rest of Obey. Do not step up against the Freya unless you know you can put them down quickly. Panda Cat did so much damage and bought so much time that Ghost wow. was able to turn this fight into a clean two for two. I don't, I, you did give Mike some credit, so I'll say I'm not giving Mike enough credit for how sick these Riptides have been. It might cost him his life here as Stuart and Inbound continue the chase, but he had a great one over the wall to stop Inbound from chasing Sam underneath the tower. Another good one to allow him to reposition later on. And now Inbound chasing a bit too far is suddenly catching up to Captain Twig. Full health and full mana. You never chase the kill because you end up walking into backup. Yeah, don't chase the kill that long for sure. And we know the communication center from Obey was saying, all right, let it go. Stuart immediately disengaged after the wave, went as right. far back as he could. But inbound, kind of seeing red, just moves up a little bit too far into the enemy jungle. Clean rotation from Captain Twig off of a respawn in that team fight. Finds himself a pretty nice kill there. I mean, Obey's been able to find these small footholds throughout the duration of the match, but even then, they haven't established themselves a lead. Captain Twig uses the ultimate to reposition from Sino. He needed it because he was certainly in some trouble. Twig has gone with Blink instead of Aegis as Sino gets deleted. Final case show in the solo lane Thor could put out the damage too. He's got Runic Shield, Shifters, and it looks like he might be working on either a Pridwin or an Arendite. He'll have plenty on the back end of this current build to continue making this Thor strong. Yeah, I'm thinking that Final K will be looking towards the Arendite. Sino, wow. instead of going this new item build that I was expecting, maybe a Sledge would have worked out very well in this chalk, he instead elects to go this very assassin-focused build, Brawler's Beat Stick, Arendite. Looks like he's finally going to move into a Runic Shield or potentially an Anchile. Uh, this build is nice, but he's not going to get an insane amount of value. His burst potential is still pretty low, and he's not tanky at all, which is going to result in exactly what we just saw. Any CC that finds itself home onto Sino sure should result in a kill for Ghost gaming and so far it has we talked about the magical adc builds and how it might be hakate lifesteal boots into rings and magus but look here from panda cat he just wants to step on the gas hastened ring is his third item overall and i think if you're feeling yourself on freya it's hard to get a better item even though i think demonic grip's pretty core for her but hastened ring is similarly a strong power spike I would say that Panacat right now, even despite not having any penetration in the build, the power spike that you get from Ring of Akate on its own and the life seal slash sustain is going to be enough to make up for the fact that he's missing out on a little bit of that burst potential. So Hasten Ring's just going to keep him involved in these fights as long as possible. Stewart's got a two level lead though. Panacat has to be worried. That's true. Stewart's played very well this set, I think, overall. So even in game one, and now here in game two, Twig has his beads forced, as it was Obey who pulled the gold fury. Rip 
Tide pulls two members back in, but the Rivers of Doom a bit off the mark, allows for them to escape. Fine OK doesn't find much of his dunk either, but Sam has gotten to the back line, forced the new off into the air, and the shield continues to buy him time. Now the Valkyrie's discretion being used aggressively, fully on retreat is Obey Alliance as Ghost Gaming continues to swarm. Look at the Riptide. There is nowhere for inbound to go as Twig gets the double, and Ghost can head right back towards Gold Fury. Panda catches W key the entire time. Sino, Sino, where are you going? He goes back in, immediately gets banished, and has to use the beads. Obey has got to be thinking carefully about how they re-engage on this Gold Fury. No ultimates available. Ducky's coming up soon, so there's no snipe steal potential. Sino can't re-engage either without his ultimate. They just have to let gold go. That's the best call they could have made, which is still a pretty poor one, because now we're looking at a 5,000 gold deficit in favor of Ghost Gaming. That fight started to go poorly for Obey. The second that Panda Cat showed up, he pressed 2, he pressed 1, he pressed W, <laughs> and no one on the side of Obey was able to stop him. And it's just going to continue going that way because Obey doesn't have a safe way to engage deep onto him. The rest of Ghost Gaming is playing the Spearhead Draft. Final K was the deepest one. Obey tried to peel back and kill him while taking shots to the back from Freya the entire time. Someone's got to stop the damage coming through from Panda Cat. And to be fair, I don't know what more you can ask than for your sub to be two levels ahead of Panda Cat, who I think you can make the argument is just the best hunter in the world right now. It's very impressive to me what Stewart's been able to do. I think the real failing for my man Stewart was in the picks and bands phase. It's hard to outvalue a Freya even when you're playing better, as Pyromancer are being looked at by Obey Alliance. They have frozen out Sam for soccer to try and keep him at bay, but they have to drop the objective. Obey Unbound stays on the front side of the fight as he continues to move up a aggressively, but Ghost Gaming aren't going to give them anything for free. Obey come right back to the Pyro, but they're not even going to start that up. They're fully dropping it. Let what happened in Duo Lane a couple of seconds ago, we saw it on the mini-map. <laughs> Panda Cat was running down Stuart from nearly Oom and a deficit. That's the strength, the relative <laughs> value that Freya brings. I don't care if you're four levels up. I don't care if you loaded in the game ten minutes before Panda Cat. At this point in the match, there's just about no one who can step to him. It's really difficult to try and stop him. Ducky is in a bad spot, sandwiched between Polar Bear Mike and Fine OK, able to reposition back towards the tower, and Mike and Fine are not looking to hard commit to him here. But you're correct when you talk about Freya's value, even when she's behind, this has not been enough. They're asking quite a bit, I think, of young man Stewart to, to keep him out of it to this extent. Now Pyromancer pulled again by Ghost. It's been brought down low, wall stun to keep inbound out, and Ghost secure the objective. Panda Cat not here for this fight. That might be why Obey like it so much, but the Rivers of Uke stops Sino from chasing down Captain Twig. The dump from Fine OK lands onto one in the back, and Sino is suddenly low. He'll be the first casualty of this fight as inbound in trouble too, and Panda Cat steps on the gas up against Stewart to push the Uller out of the fight as well. Obey are not winning this fight on any front. Yeah, Sino's got a rough case of Napoleon Syndrome. My man, you are not a frontliner anymore, and neither is Bobby as he's getting chased into the Tier 2 tower. But it's a war on two fronts. All of Ghost Gaming are chasing separate members, and it just works out everywhere. Captain Twig is going to single-handedly take away your speed. Your Tier 2 tower is going to fall. Sino's dead, and you get a TKO on at least three members. Ghost can just back to base here, regroup, get some Senshi Wards out around fire, and force another engagement that Obey really are going to have to play perfectly if they want any chance at winning. Look at this experience deficit, though, Myth. I feel like that's where things have truly gotten out of control. Obviously, the gold bad as well, as they're down 8,000, but it's a four-level lead for Fine. Okay, 12,000 total is the experience gap. Four-level for Sam, three in the mid for Twig, four for Polar Bear Mike. The only place Obey is ahead is Stewart over Panda Cat, but in terms of their relative value, they're behind there as well. This has been a brutal game number two for Obey because I think they've played much better than game one. It's just they're not seeing the results. Uh, I would say that the draft that Obey brought here would have worked last phase. It would have been just fine. It's a high execution draft, but it would have been able to fight in. But now Ghost Gaming's really students of the meta. We see Nemesis has hit a quick resurgence. They lock that one in. Final K playing this Thor solo is almost completely new to this phase. We didn't see that a single time in phase one. And Panda Cat on Freya, I've, I've said it so many times, I'm not going to say it again. That god is absolutely bonkers right now with the itemization changes. Just now picks up the Typhon's Fang, which is going to boost up Lifesteal and Penetration. Sino on yeah. this chalk has gotten just about no value. 
He's moving up. He's finally starting to get some of that defense online. But already, we saw that Captain Twig and Final K just kind of peppering him with some damage. Took away 50% of his health. And that was through Chalk Ceiling. It's going to be difficult for Obey Alliance from this point. The soul leader there for Fine OK on the backside of his build. You mentioned previous Thor solos. It's kind of an SOT thing as inbound gets the two man freeze. Fine OK used the beads to move right on through it. The ultimate's already been used from Wolfie as well. So they won't have that at the end for the chase potential, but they got the information that two members of Ghost aren't here. Fine OK to the sky, dunks right back down, but doesn't have the wall to follow it up. The CC chain on the Fine is good, but I don't know if that should be their focus. Way to the back line goes Sam for soccer. He cuts everybody low and Twig gets the first kill. Inbounds low as well. Mike cleans that one up. Valkyrie's discretion from Panda Cat allows them to get another kill as Captain Twig buries Sino as well. A double from the hub. Wap player means Ghost Gaming are on top and there's just nowhere for Stewart to run. A triple for Captain Twig as Ghost Gaming get the DSI. That might just be game. 30 seconds left on the nearest respawn. 20 so. for Bobby but that's yes. just a Ymir. Freya has taken one hit of damage in that entire engagement, and it's because he accidentally walked into the Phoenix after he landed from Valkyrie's discretion. No one on Obey can match him, and uh, look at this DPS now. The Titan's not going to match him either. No, it's over at this point. Ghost Gaming pretty dominantly Miffle have taken care of their first set of phase number two. A 25-minute game for the first one, a 23-minute game for number two. And if you thought that the playoff champs were going to come in slacking a bit, well, you just got your wake-up call. Yeah, I, I think that's on me. Really glad that, A, I was told to put my vote in. I voted wrong, clearly. Glad that Dave <laughs> pointed it out earlier that I'm the only caster that had Obey winning this one. I mean, they just seemed like they weren't ready for this meta. They didn't pick Great. anything that I was ready for. I mean, again, just to go straight back to P's and P's, they were given the opportunity to take Freya themselves, and instead they right. first pick the Uller and give Ghost just run of the entirety of the new meta. I, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Ray, I think it's a bit of a misunderstanding of those picks' values because obviously Stewart played well on the Uller. You cannot knock them for that. It's just that even playing that well, it couldn't match it, right? And everywhere else on the map fell behind, too. It's not just that Hunter matchup. They were losing across the map to Ghost here, too. So well played to Ghost in their very first game. I'll get it back to the desk, though. Have them break it down from here. Yeah, thank you, Finch. And Mifflin, the only caster who voted against Ghost here. Again, Mifflin voted for Obey here in set number one of the weekend. And it wasn't particularly close here, Gormizer. We figured that Obey would, you know, come in. They'd have a tough time, though. We, we knew this from the start, that Ghost were coming in, maybe a little bit more complete, maybe a little bit stronger right off the bat. But, but Gore, I have to admit, I didn't expect it to be this handy. 25 minutes was the longest game we had in this set, and then a 23-minute game two finally puts Obey to bed here in their first game of phase two. I uh, can't quite hear you there, Gormizer. Uh, yeah, hit that button right where I go. need to. I'm sure <laughs> I can have a voice where it comes through. I, I was going to highlight the, the Nemesis more than anything because it really is the fact that you're picking these warrior jungles. You know, you go to game one, and it's a lot of the sunder that, that breaks down right. what you're going to see out of the Nike jungle. You come here in a game two, and you're bringing in a Chalk, but Chalk, uh, first off, but I would love to see a list of Chalk, what Chalk does well. He heals himself pretty well. I guess he's got a nice big silence, good knockup mm -hmm. on it. Uh, uh, some decent damage you can get, but at the end of the day, it, I, I don't think there's really much I can <laughs> see out of him that I'm not going to get out of an assassin. Like, yes, a giant AoE silence is nice, but is it worth shredding, you know, and losing, like, a Kali, a Bakasura, et right. cetera, et cetera? You know, you see Sam be so potent throughout all of this. Granted, he had a, a couple of other assassin-esque damage numbers kind of, uh, you know, around him and one actual other assassin being alongside him. But once you pick up that ne uh, that nemesis, inbound, he's going to struggle. Sino, he's going to struggle. They're just not going to have those in innate pr protections they need. They're a pretty easy target for him to strip early on. And it just makes it so much easier for them to, to lock everyone down. Now, PBM got to play Yamoja two out of two games here in a set, and it certainly looked good. Really, the only advantage that Obey had here, uh, XP and, and maybe even gold-wise, was Stuart over Panda Cat. So you have to give uh, the, the sub here for Obey credit where it's due, but it's a Ymir and, and Uller lane and a Freya that needs a little bit of time to scale up. And I'm glad that you bring up the Nemesis because that's sort of where this one snowballed out of control again. I mean, I saw a Thor locked in late and, and 
you know, old <laughs> habits and all that, I'm thinking, yeah, that, that Sam, without realizing that maybe his new carry in, uh, in Nemesis was locked in there. Gore, I remember we were watching the SEC playoffs what was that? A, a couple of weeks ago, we saw a Nemesis, and none of us were really bought in. But maybe it's time to to buy a ticket to the Nemesis hype train. I do think the these more recent builds are definitely helping her out. But I also think that the compositions that Obey had kind of played more into it. But there's also a lot of those. Specifically, you could see in the highlights, there there was a little bit of Sam getting some last hits. <laughs> it wasn't you know like six seven kills that were all him. That Captain Twig Hebo was bringing in a lot of damage to the mix. I think alongside that, that Thor from the solo lane, being able to set up those kills, whether it's through CC, it's knockups, it's stuns, it's a lot of, of centralized poke you can get onto yep. a single target. Then you throw Freya in there for the late game, and at that point, you're just questioning, what do we do? And unfortunately, you need maybe 20 more minutes to try and figure out just how to stop right. it, and, and Ghost are never going to give you that time. Yeah, when the only person that's behind is the one who's going to end up scaling out of control if you're able to hold on into the game. Uh, you're not in a great spot if you're a bay. We talked a good bit about Sam and the Nemesis pick here in their first game of phase number two. For good reason, the Nemesis looked fantastic, and so did Sam. And as such, Finch is standing by with Sam, the Nemesis man, for a post-game interview. Thank you, Dave. Sam, looking fantastic in-game and out-of-game. How you doing, buddy? I want to ask you first off, because he played the Nemesis so much here, just how strong do you think Nemesis is right now? You don't have to give too much away, but is she an evergreen pick, or was that just in response to what Obey were doing? Um, Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, she's definitely really good, but I think there's a lot of really good picks, and you can kind of go a lot of directions, I'm pretty sure, with what you want to play. Like, mm -hmm. It looked like Sino and I valued a lot of different gods, I'd say. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Nemesis, I think, is just a pretty solid pick, you know. All right, well, talk to me a little bit about how the whole squad is feeling about these changes, because a lot has changed, I would say, between Phase 1 and Phase number 2. Obviously, from this game, it looks like you all haven't missed mm -hmm. a beat. How comfortable is the team feeling overall with all these changes you needed to wrap your head around? Um, I mean, I think we're generally comfortable but i think us and maybe every team sort of trying to figure out how like the meta is going to be and like what picks are going to be top priority i think only just started screaming though we're figuring it out scrims were a bit rougher than we showed today so that's pretty nice for us i guess but uh yeah Okay, well, I want to ask you about the picks and bans phase, because I thought that was where we might have seen the biggest disparity between the two teams here. How important do you think that's going to be here in phase two, at least at the beginning, right off the midseason update? Uh, yeah, it'd definitely be really important. I mean, picks and bans will always be, I guess, uh, uh, determined by how you like, think the meta will be. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, especially at the beginning when like everybody's not completely certain on where they want to be. Uh, it's pretty important to try and nail down the top gods, you know, as best as possible. All right. Well, congrats on the big win there, Sam. You guys are obviously looking great right out of the gate. Appreciate you taking some time to talk to me. It's going to be a quick break, though. We'll be right back with the next set here on the SPL.